step into a world shrouded in ash and darkness, where ancient powers linger and legends come to life. Welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. We are playing Forbidden Lands. Join us as we set sail on longships and explore the unknown, braving untold danger and discovering what hidden treasure lies beneath ash and snow. So we left last session with the pack having successfully defeated two Reaver longships and claiming them as their own, unfortunately at the expense of the ship they were already on. Right now, your crew and Restless Dead are busying themselves with uh, emergency repairs, uh, filling in uh, any sort of holes or leaks that have uh, emerged on the ship from the battle. And you have a group of Reaver prisoners uh, that are currently uh, huddled together. Uh, they are not bound yet, but they have been uh, disarmed. And your uh, Reaver companion, uh, One Eye, is talking to them in a language unknown to the rest of you. As this is happening, uh, your crew begins to uh, set sail for the nearby shoreline. Uh, ready to beach the ships to do uh, the minor repairs that it'll take for you to get back traveling tomorrow morning. As this is happening, Gunk, you find yourself with a good amount of time to yourself. Uh, whether it's now while the ships are being repaired at sea or after they've beached and camp is being set up, uh, you find a moment to yourself. And what are you doing here? So he, so Gunk would find not just a moment to himself, but he would probably try to kind of hide a little bit. Like he's, he doesn't, what he's doing, he doesn't necessarily want anyone to really see. Uh, if, if his, if his undead are still up, he might use them to kind of run interference or give warning if anyone approaches, but he'll find like a, uh, you know, a little burrow or he'll find some, some, you know, some place where he can hide behind a, a rock and he'll dig into his pack, which is, uh, exquisitely packed, by the way, like extraordinarily efficiently. Uh, and he takes out, you know, he's got the tablets and everything in there, but he has other things as well. And he looks around and makes sure like no one's watching, make sure that damn otter is not nearby. And he pulls out a skull, uh, that he, uh, that he unwraps. He had it like in a, like a small little cloth. And then he says, uh, and he's kind of, he kind of holds it in his hand. He's like, I told you I would get you out. See? I'm not sure if you can see, but uh, but we are on the shore. We are doing quite well, and you promised me a story, Penny. We have two boats now. You see, I will tell you what uh, what came of us, and you shall tell me what came of you and the unsung and well, <laughs> everything you know. Everything I know. Well, that will take quite some time. I'm very patient. I cannot see the way you perceive. However, I can sense what is happening. I sense struggle, yet victory. Mm. It is accurate. Life is a struggle, but this battle with the river is eh, self, self-titled, I suppose. They are thuggish. They are brats they will they will see themselves stricken from this earth when my time is done i guarantee you that but we have started by taking two of their ships and several of them hostage if not yet decided what to do with them perhaps the restless dead will rip them apart perhaps bacho will feast perhaps we will just drown them in the very seas that they tried to drown us Now, I'm going to continue talking because you look a little bit unnerved. You look as though you don't really want to say anything to me right now. Let me tell you more about what happened to us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you had, you had, you had a Did little, I cut little, out? little lag. Yeah, you cut a little, yeah, little yeah. lag. Yeah, I was trying to be up. Wake it would up, not be the worst outcome if the Reavers were removed from these lands. However, I fear that Scourge has dug in too deep. These are not just pirates of a sort. They have 
They have come, they have gone, they have returned. Is that what you tell me? They may be pirates now, but that is not what they were originally. The Reavers invaded to seek the treasure that is packed, was packed next to me, currently in your backpack. The puzzle box. And he will idly pull it out, kind of twirl it around in his hand. Yes, it's a very fascinating item. I learn something new about it every so often. There are layers to this thing, I believe. Why is it that they sought this out? For the power it contains, the the blood of Desheb. It is infinite power. It is what made the unsung unsung, and it is what has left me in this condition. Yes. Yes. You mentioned something of this, but what does it do? There is blood. There is a drop of blood somewhere within this device, but should I get to it, and I will, what do I do with it? What does it look like? What will it grant me? What powers? Out with it, Penny. It will grant you godhood. There will be no power beyond you if you can master it. You... Or it will destroy you. <laughs> uh, uh, Gunk didn't hear the second part. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is my destiny. I think this is what the Earth Mother has been driving me towards all this time. She recognized in me a kindred spirit, one whose mortal form was not enough to sustain the power that was in him. And she has been driving me, hinting at this thing over and over. Yes, yes. And you can help That me. is one interpretation. The other would be that the Earth Mother wishes it returned to her. That was the power she used to create the world, the Earth that you stand upon. Okay, yes, and yet she would grant great reward then to whoever returns it, perhaps. Perhaps a mother life, great powers, yes, secrets of the art gain, etc., etc., etc. Either path will will suffice for gunk. Yeah. The theft of that puzzle box was a great crime that the unsung perpetrated against the gods, against the Kadaran. Yes. He yes. used their own gifts against them, stole the possessions that were most important to them, that granted them most of their power. And that is why they have left this world not left so much as become disinterested in. Uh, and so if I return this to the Earth Mother, perhaps she will return in greater force, usher in a new age. Hmm. It would be very perhaps. likely. It would likely also require the return of several of your possessions the heart of your friend Bacho, the crown upon your head, yeah. the otter's face. Yeah. What? I'm sorry? What do you mean, the otter's face? You mean that abstractly, yes? Not literal? No, I mean his face, the, the mask that he wears. See, I have suspected that it is not an otter, but underneath he is something else. Who is he? You, you must you must know. He was once very important to the unsung. And he betrayed the unsung. And his penance is to live forever in nothingness. Mm -hmm. Nothing is important to him anymore. Nothing matters. Nothing remembers him. He cares about nothing. He might as well not exist, and yet he does. He lingers up, lingers on. Do you know of a, a process with which I might um, remove that which keeps him in the form that he now takes, that I could perhaps grant his memories again? He seems not to have any. I have, I have scoured his thoughts. He is not one for deep thought. 
the skull does not reply to you at first when you ask what process, but you just receive a feeling and emotion and your hand just drops down casually and then it brushes against your knife in your belt. And you just feel the slightest confirmation there or lack of contradiction. It is too late to return his memory to him. That is long, long gone. Hmm. I see. So any knowledge he might have had about the unsung, is that lost? My knowledge is not lost, but his oh, is. Yes. And so he does not offer anything of value to me then, does he? It depends on how much you value companionship. I have, I have enough companions as is. I do not need another, especially one so irritating as that one. Then it appears you have answered your own question. I see. I see. Now, one more question, Penro. Returning this, should I want, to the Earth Mother, do you know how I would do this? By the time you open that puzzle box, you will not need to ask that question. Yeah. I see. Yes. All right. Is there anything else that you need before you go back into the back? This conversation has been pleasant. Thank you. It will not be the last. So he wraps the skull back up, tucks it back in, looks around, makes sure no one sees him, looks at his knife. Uh, and as you emerge from the uh, craggy rocks that you were hiding in, you find that the sailors are hard at work. It's uh, nightfall now. It's getting dark, but they still have torches lit to continue working. They don't want to go to sleep until the progress is done. Um, they're close to finishing. Uh, a lot of the repairs were superficial uh, and could have led to more major problems, but they were caught soon enough. Uh, during the battle, none of the ships took the second level of damage. Uh, so that first level is easily enough repaired. Uh, they have salvaged as much as they could from the wreckage of your own ship. They have a row of sailors convalescing. Uh, anyone who is injured uh, is uh, in their own tent, uh, separated, including the otter is in there. However, one eye uh, has chosen to stay near the other reavers, despite his injury, which was uh, quite grievous as well. Uh, yes, the otter lost a foot, so he is still recovering. Uh, has not been very productive right now. What are the rest of you doing during this time? If the crew is working, Mirren's probably got the, the little hearth in the middle of the ship kind of brewing and booming with, with warmth and is just trying to get something to help them stay awake. Uh, good old dirty bean water. Yes, and uh, you dig into the supplies of the Reavers. And on one hand, a lot of their supplies are just disgusting things that you would never want to eat. And... The other hand is it appears that they have quite a huge stockpile from merchant ships that they've raided. Uh, and there's quite a few things that would you would consider to be delicacies and very rare. Some things that you would have thought that you would never even taste in your lifetime. Oh, Bacho, look, look, saffron. Bacho, this, we can flavor your meat and you'll, you have to like saffron. I prefer the taste of blood. Yeah, and the warmth of the organs as they come from the body. Do you know how expensive this this is? He sticks one finger, a paw finger in no, it. No, no. Oh. <laughs> ah. Blood is better. But I'm sure you'll do your best with it. I, I'm I, off to make sure the raiders hold to their agreement. Someday, Bacho, you'll appreciate fine cooking. 
and she waves you off. Bacho, you said you were going to the Reavers. Uh, you'll find that One Eye is no longer necessarily talking to them, and they're still secluded. Most of them are bound uh, at this point. Uh, not tightly bound, but enough that they would not be able to get free in a moment's notice. And One Eye is casually mingling among them. Uh, there are a lot of threatening glances towards him, but you also find a few nods of respect here and there. What are you doing? Bacho is just sort of, he's making a circuit around the entire group. He's putting eyes on every one of the Reavers, making sure that they're secure, they don't have any weapons on them, and he's listening to what they have to mumble and say amongst themselves. Give me an insight check, let's call it. Let's call it. All right. Uh, inside of two, and my wits is down to four out of five at the moment because I haven't rested yet, so. One six, but no one, so I'm going to push it. Okay. Three sixes, but I did lose another point of wits. Three sixes. So most of the time they're talking in a language that you don't necessarily know. But at the end of the day, they are still wolfkin. And a lot of the mannerisms transfer over. So you can tell when, like, ears flatten with a certain tone, um, if, if their lip curls in a specific way. And you can tell that One Eye has made some inroads with them. Uh, it's somewhat surprising because he's an outcast. Uh, you don't know a lot about Reaver culture, but the fact that he was an outcast means that he lost a lot of his honor and prestige. So the fact that they still, uh, a few of them still seem to respect him uh, is a huge deal. However, you can also tell that there's definitely some holdouts that no matter what he does, uh, he would never be respected by them. Uh, and you can kind of pick out a few of them that seem to be the most uh, stubborn about this whole process and seem to be sort of ringleaders that influence others as well. Bacho will go up to one eye. One eye. Are there any that we need to kneecap and leave upon the tundra? I would not leave one the same way that they left me. However, there are some that could be taught a lesson. Point them out. The one who was will have the the one whose shame will have the most impact. And one eye turns and starts barking out commands at them. And you see that the group of them, uh, they stand up and their legs are loosely tied together. Their hands are bound tightly together. Uh, and the group parts. And there is one that just stands in the center. I told them that if he can defeat you, they will go free. Mm. Good. Untie his hands and feet and give him a blade. Well Our dance. Ingram hobbles over there, uh, takes out his knife, uh, cuts through, and then hands him his own weapon, his own sword. The as soon as rest he has of the group begins to part... Uh, and they form like a, a square of sorts, a good amount of distance. And they're all looking intently at the two of you now in the center of this. Uh, so Bacho takes in this other wolf can stink and you know, takes it deep inside of him so he'll know it for days. You smell of fear and cowardice, cousin. So I'll spend... Uh, Four points of willpower to lock this guy in. Um, are we doing actual initiative or am I just... Yeah, let's go ahead and do initiative. Okay. Uh, go ahead and just roll a d10 for me. We'll keep it simple. Okay. Eight. Eight. He rolled a three, so you were going first. So you bark that out to him, and he responds again in his own language uh, with a sort of disdain to his voice. Like, you can tell that he does not wish to even speak your common tongue. 
and you were going first. So uh, I charge, and with my fast action, I will swing my long sword down at him. So that's one, two. He will attempt to parry. That is four on the strength dice, three on the skill dice, six bonus dice, and a D8. And two D6 for my sword. All right, he only parried one, so you get that through. Uh, go uh, ahead. Uh, seven on the D8, so that's two? Or is that still one? Uh, seven is one. I believe one, eight one. is two. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and two for my sword is nine points of damage. Nine, all right. Uh I'm gonna roll his armor here, but I don't think it's I will gonna matter. Spend too one much. point of willpower to bypass his armor. Okay. Uh, he still had chainmail, but you could tell that it was damaged and weakened. Uh, and you use your willpower to know instinctively where there are some breaks in the chain. Uh, and go ahead and describe your kill here, as you're killing him in one blow. So yeah, Bacho, he just charges almost. He's got his sword behind him. And he does this full stop and just pivots his right hip and brings the sword across and then puts his elbow in the guy's sword across his neck and elbows him in the snout and his head just pops off and falls down his back. And then Bacho just walks away. Doesn't even turn back and look. You're like, you don't look at the explosion. You don't look at the decapitated body. You just walk away. You walk in the, the square that had formed around you just parts in deference to you. Uh, Arngrim begins barking out uh, very vicious sounding words at them uh, and they fall into line and with that Arngrim actually begins cutting them loose. Uh, he starts cutting the bonds and he tells you they're yours now. You have nothing to fear of them. You'll be a good crew I turn and howl out at them. Serve me no. well and there will be profit for all and fresh meat. Arngrim and then I just translates that for you. Uh, and then you just hear like some growls of approval, especially at the fresh meat part. And then I point at one of them. I say, bring me his heart. The rest of him is yours. Uh, and he gets that translated by Arngrim again, one eye, and uh, just starts carving. And as you go, uh, he brings you the heart uh, by the fireside where Mirren is currently cooking up some saffron. And so uh, Bacha walks over to Mirren and he takes this still bloody warm heart and just rolls it in the saffron and then takes a bite. Mm. No, no, the saffron. The blood is still better. <laughs> the whole tray is covered in blood. <laughs> it will make it good, Mirren. Oh, no. <laughs> a flavor to rejoice at. I, I guess the Vulcan will be enjoying the rest of the saffron together. <laughs> Maybe Gunk as well. I'm, I'm uh, glad you're enjoying Zeldra, it. <laughs> what are you doing during this time, this evening? Uh, so after all of the shenanigans with the sinking of the ships and all of those kinds of things, she is doing what she does and making sure that her best friend in the whole wide world, Ven, is taken care of and relaxed and calm and not seasick. And so while Bacho is like one shot decapitating uh, Reavers, she is like singing to her horse and braiding its hair. Uh, you're braiding her hair. You're cleaning some of the superficial wounds that she took from the fight. Uh, most of them scratches and things like that, not from actual swords or axes. Uh, but I think there was a point where she was kicking quite a bit, too. So uh, she might have gotten a little bit back. Uh, as you're braiding and singing to her, you hear a <clears throat> uh, Zaldrin and Woford's familiar voice is right behind you. <laughs> yes. I don't know if you saw what was going on back there, but Bacho was like killing some of the prisoners uh, and then they started like serving him hearts. And I, you know, you're you're the most level headed one here. So I feel like we have a bond. We have a rapport. Um, and well, I don't know if we need 10 more Bachos. 
Um, there is but one Bacho. That's exactly what I'm saying. I agree. He's so unique and special. We don't need more Bachos to dilute it. So you don't like the Reavers? No. No, the, they could kill us in our sleep. Sure. But they won't because Bacho just took the head off of one. Problem solved. Yeah, you see, like, if someone took the head off someone I know, I would want revenge rather than, like, you know, serving them. Well, that's what makes you different from a Reaver. I think they will be fine. I think Bacho did what Bacho does. I think Bacho spoke the language of the Reavers. I do not think we will have problems with them. I understand your concern. Things concern you. It's it's okay. Yeah, but like, I, I don't know if you do understand because like, have you seen all those teeth? They're so sharp. I mean, you can like hang out okay. by me on this ship if you don't want to be by the Reavers. Oh, I'll definitely hang out with you. Thank you for offering that. Yeah, I'm going to be with you the whole time. But just like, bear with me here. Like, they have all these sharp teeth and just like, you know, there's a lot of them. So imagine like all those teeth like tearing into you. That's not a pleasant thing. You don't want to wake up to that. And, you know, let's be honest, I'll probably be the first one they go after because I'm the most threatening to them. I, I don't know if that's the reason why, but yes, they might go for you first. But they would have to go through me first. Are you not going to sleep? Are you, okay, so you're bringing a problem to me. Are you bringing a solution along with the problem? Or are you just no, 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 I, I came to you for the solution. Oh, but Bacho's has a solution, so the problem is solved. Okay. Um, I, I feel like there's a disconnect here. You know, we got a little failure to me communicate. That's fine. Um, you can stay right by my side, and they would have to bite through me to get to you. Problem solved. Problem you're afraid that's of better the than nothing. But uh, solution. when they attack us, just say, I, I'm going to say I told you so. I'm going to say it. Uh, well, sure. Um... You can, here, I, I feel like you need to, to do something useful. See what I've done here with Ven? See this? See see that? Yeah, yeah, you, you nodded her hair. Uh, hmm, there's a, that I'll, I will, you, you, you do that to Cloud. You do the same to Cloud. Okay, you're going to stay right here, right? I, anytime I leave, you will go right with me. And with that, we fade on that scene of Woford never leaving your side for the rest of the <laughs> night. Uh, likely for the rest of this trip, he is glued to you. Uh, and uh, the repairs are dying down. The camp is quieting, going to sleep. Is there anything else you'd like to do as most people are asleep? Or are you all content to rest as well? Mostly looking at you, Gunk. Uh, Gunk will... After his little moment with uh, with Penvro, he will venture over to the kitchens, check in on Mirren, uh, and he will I'm like, oh, why does yes, why why is that saffron seem to be coated in blood? What do you do? You want some saffron that's been slowly cooked with a little bit of steak on the side of it, if, with a little bit of extra blood? And there's no one else going to eat it. I, I don't want to no. be rude and take all of it. B Bacho ate the first bit with his bloody heart that he took from his conquest. Oh, right. So, I heard about that. Just yeah, it was the dude's good head for off, him. Like. And then he brought it and he just put it in. With, we've got so much saffron covered in blood now. Classic Bacho. Well, Which I mean, means... do you want to split it? We can split it. It's, 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 it's very good, yeah. I, I, I understand, and I could make some, like, I don't know, blood cupcakes, but how many people in the crew going to eat those? I mean, that's a good question. Like, I, I think a lot of them want stuff cooked, uh, whatever, lose flavor, I, mean, I think. There's, a, there's a process of, of adding blood into cooking. It, it adds, like, a, a deepening of the saltiness of the flavor, but it's, like, a really rare thing for people to enjoy. 
All right. I mean, they're probably really hungry, though, and desperate to eat just about anything. So I think okay. if any, there's any a time to do it, it would be now. But then if you don't want to risk it, I haven't really eaten today. I'm feeling kind of peckish, to be honest. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did. Like, I did totally save you here. Uh, you got a medium steak on the side and put some of the saffron on it and uh, some roasted vegetables. Here you go. And then we had some leftover stew uh, that the crew tried to cook again. I'm sorry. Here you go. Right. I'm like... 60 pounds. I can't eat all. Th thank you. I will eat some of this and then. Good luck. Okay. I'll, I guess I'll make some uh, blood based cupcakes. Uh, it'll be a surprise. We just don't tell the crew what's in it. No, 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 no. Good job. And he'll like kind of pat her on the back and in the process cast transfer and uh, <laughs> try, try to drain a bunch of her will. Yeah, yeah, up to seven. Uh, go for it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Yeah, you got one. I, no, I mean, I I got a mishap. I rolled a two, oh. so I got a mishap. Oh my god, god dang it! At least I've given you all the food already. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, what is that? Thirty six. Oh dear. Thirty six. Yeah, Thirty six. Probably not bad. It's mid thirties. Uh, this spell triggers a magical disease with a virulence of 2d6. <laughs> you and everyone within arm's length of you for the next quarter day are con exposed to the contagion. <laughs> Oh. We're in the kitchen with all the food. I know. Yes. I, know. I like to think oh, maybe maybe we think it's 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 a reaction to the bloody saffron, but in fact it's just some sort of disease. <laughs> the blood oh. cupcakes made everyone sick. They're all gonna play uh, Kipser for it. Uh, all right. So virulence. You need to roll uh, opposed endurance against yeah. the virulence rating of two d six, which is going to be six. Okay. All right. So both of you can give me endurance right now. Okay. And this is going to be opposed. Right. Uh, the I statistics have stayed true. I rolled one six on D6. I, ro I rolled two, but I also had a push, and so I took a strength uh, damage. Oh, no. Mirren does not look happy. So I get three dice because I have three strength. So I rolled one one. I'm like, no sixes, got to push. Anyway, we're going to sleep soon, right? We're going to sleep soon. I just rolled three ones. Uh, so I've broken <laughs> myself. Um, my strength is broken. That's fully, I'm blaming the disease, uh, I guess. It really hit me hard. Nobody's getting cooking for days now. Good luck with okay. that. So here's the thing. If you fail the roll, you fall sick, uh, which I believe is a condition, has several effects. The day after... Uh, you suffer one point of damage to both strength and agility. You cannot recover your strength or agility while sick, except through magic. You make a sickness roll once per day. Each failed roll means you suffer another point of damage to both oh, no. strength and agility. And here's the kicker. If your strength is broken when sick, you die yeah. after another day if you don't get well before uh, that. Hold on. I have... Okay, so... <clears throat> so if I'm reading this right, that means that Mirren could die tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> As soon as you succeeded a sickness roll, you are no longer sick. Oops. <laughs> uh, uh, how much willpower did you take? Uh, well, do you do you want me to leave? I can leave you some. Like, I don't have to take it all. Uh, so um, because I have a fox uh, at rank two, I can do Path of the Beast, which is your animal can help you when you're broken. See damage mm. and recovery. Does that count as magical recovery? Each willpower you spend recovers one point of the attribute that reached zero. You cannot use this effect when you are not broken. Don't you said I think you it, said up to seven. Like I'll, I'll take five. Like you, you take five and leave sure. you with a couple. Uh, I'm gonna nice read job. that before I make my judgment call. But go ahead and uh, discuss how this looks for you as you fall. It doesn't have to be immediate. So, Mm -hmm. Gunk just like touches Mirren. Mirren goes pale and then green and then vomits everywhere no. around the kitchen. Don't even get to make the blood cupcakes. The saffron the is absolutely ruined and she just like collapses and passes out in her own vomit. Mirren? Mirren. He's got a staff. Uh, uh, Are you okay? I don't feel so good, Mr. You Gunk. You don't look good either. Oh goodness. Um, 
Yeah, it really is. And these better. dice are going to jail now. <laughs> right. Uh... Uh, so she's. Can I roll a healing test to, to help her with broken? If I'm sick, it needs magic to recover, okay. not medicine. That's what I'm looking right? at. However, yeah. I do think with your beast ability, I think that would be considered magic grazo. because you do have a magic bond with yes. your companion. The way I'm reading this, uh, it, <laughs> so my, I think that makes sense. My little fox jumps on me, nips gunk away from me, and uh, like just curls up on top of me. And the magic of having an animal uh, gives me two strength back. However, I would say that you're still sick because that does not remove the condition. You still need to succeed at a sickness roll. That's uh, so why I that didn't go with tomorrow. one. Because <laughs> I can't recover it. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, Gunk, how many other people are you going to be near uh, this evening? Uh, does it happen? Uh, let's see. I would. It doesn't I'm have to be so like they immediately fall sick. Uh, you can lock probably yourself won't in the, the kitchen day. with me. I would definitely... Is if I if I have listen, I mean like if 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 he has no idea that he's causing it, then he would go. I think it's normal. fair to say you know. Uh okay. you're the one who cast the spell and it warped it in a way I think you would understand. As soon as you touch me. Okay. That'll be like okay, if that's the case, I'd be like, uh Walford, could you give me a hand really quick in here? Uh Mirin I she's not feeling too well. I can't really carry her to her tent. Could you do that for me, please? You need me to? I'm already in bed, and Zoldrin's already asleep, and she said that I'm not supposed to leave her. Like, that was her orders. Well, don't worry. I outrank her, so, you know, uh, <laughs> it'll be fine. I thought we were, like, you know, all equals, like an equal team of five, is what I was, I was under the understanding. Right. And, and he's you yelling get, this from outside the When you the get tank. to the higher level, we start to reveal how life really is. You're not there yet, but you're starting to be, which is why I'm explaining it to, it to you now. Now, if you would be so kind. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he pushes Zaldrin. Uh, we we have to go get Mirren. Uh, Gunk needs both of us. Uh, so you gotta wake up. No, Zaldrin, you can sleep. It's fine. We'll take care of it. Well, you're for, a bacho when you're yells. by Gunk, Gunk will protect you. When you come back to me, I'll protect you again. Gunk is just Bacho Jr. <laughs> bacho <laughs> yells out, Wolford! Help Gunk or I'll bring you over to sleep with the Reavers. I'm right on it. Soldier, are you sure you don't want to go? <laughs> you don't want to wake me right now. You, that's and you're talking, so you're already you awake. To do. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. You don't need you don't need to show me the fangs. Okay, I'm going. Uh and he Hustles over to the, the kitchen tent. Be careful. Watch the vomit. It's pretty much everywhere. Ugh. I didn't it's think... It's frozen now, too. She's so small, I didn't realize so much could come out that... Oh, goodness. It is everywhere. Ceiling, floor. It is like that that uh, dungeon. It defies reality. You know. It, it froze her to the ground as he's trying to pick her up. Well, there's a, there's a stove. You know, or warm, warm it down. You just hear it crunches like the, the tunic starts to uh, like pull away from the frozen ground. Some dirt clumps up with her. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a real good job there. Real good job. <laughs> All right. Let me make you his thirsty. Roll. You look thirsty. Here, let me get. Here you go. Here, take a sip. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. So he has a strength of two and endurance of zero. Uh, we're going to say it's the same one. Uh, no, nope, he's sick. He is sick. Which is going to make Zaldra sick because Zaldra said to come back where <laughs> she could, like, oh, my God. oh this is going to be fun. All right. So we, well, we've got patient spread, zero and we're watching the ripples here. Does it think, spread <laughs> from us? Because it's magical. Wouldn't it stick with uh, gunk? I think it always spreads from just gunk. gunk. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It does not say it spreads from anyone else. You're okay, Zaldra. Wolford right. might not be. <laughs> so Wolford pulls Mirren uh, to uh, the pack sleeping tent uh, and very gracefully uh, drops her on her bedroll uh, <laughs> and then cozies up in his bedroll next to Zaldrin. Dunk, what are you doing? Uh, I don't think he would 
if he knows that something's up, I don't, I don't know if he's intentionally trying to murder Wofert or just make him feel sick and like just feel awful. I think that's kind of the hope, but you know, whatever. Sometimes you get lucky. Well, um, Wofert caught the disease. He is sick right now. So if he fails the, you know, next roll, he'll start taking the damage. Okay. So then if that's the case and he, and so if Gunk realizes like kind of what's going on, he'll isolate himself. Um, and he'll call, you know, he'll call out to like Otter and Ted, who I think have been crashing with him a bit. And he'll be like, the two of you, no, no, Ted, no, stay. Ted, you need to stay. Stay there, stay with Otter. Uh, the two of you there, I, uh, there's something going around the camp and I think I might have got it. I don't want to get the two of you sick. So the two of you stay there. I shall go off by myself. Everything will be and fine. You would see Ted was actually kind of uh, near the otter for warmth. Normally, mm-hmm. he doesn't get along with the otter, but the otter is like uh, recovering right now, like fading in and out of consciousness because, you mm-hmm. know, it lost a foot. So that was a lot of blood loss to go with. Uh, so he's recuperating and Ted is just kind of taking advantage of that, using him as a like dog bed of sorts. Mm. And uh, make sure he's you know, take care of each other. I shall see you in the morning. All right. So you're going to sleep then. Yeah. He'll isolate himself if, if it becomes clear. Anybody who he deems uh, important uh, or uh, or just, you know, a decent person who won't go near. It is arm's length. So, like, despite the close quarters of, like, tents and everything, I think it's fair to say that you can keep people mostly at a distance. OK. Uh, yeah, we we can say go. that it passes through touch uh, okay. contact. All right. So and he will he will then, not infect the otter. OK, uh, not infect the otter. We're going to assume that you don't infect anyone if you can help it. And if you change your mind, just let me know. Uh, right now, it's just Woford and Mirren. OK, All Mirren right. was an accident. OK, like that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not group them together in such a way. I hear you. Okay. Uh, which brings us to the next day. And Mirren, let's go ahead and get that sickness roll out of the way. I have to re-roll yeah. the viral lens here. So that's so audience dice. again. Audience dice. Audience, audience dice, dice if you want it. Uh, oh, that's true. So that's uh, yes. endurance again? Yes. Uh, and you can take up to two audience dice. Yes, endurance. Oh, yeah. I'll take the two audience dice because that'll bring Got me it. to four dice. <laughs> Uh, well, let's push it again. I got a six. One six. Yay. And I need to I bring this up to two again. Need to look up who wins ties on opposing rolls. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you rolled for um, the disease? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I only got one six. Yeah, it's oh, an opposed no. roll. So in some cases you have to beat your foe to win an opposed roll you have to successfully roll more than your adversary okay Equal so i believe you are not. still sick here i am still sick. uh and Dude, you are probably a going to take strength and agility yeah yeah mm-hmm. another point of strength and agility all right let me i am uh going to break again but i'm okay for a round uh so the the day starts mirin is still feeling awful uh i need oh. to make woford's roll here too uh, and he definitely failed. So he's taking strength and agility. Uh, so Mirren and Wolford uh, wake up and they stumble out of the tent. Uh, both of them look like they could vomit yet again. Uh, likely thinking it's food poisoning from uh, contaminated saffron. Bacho squares up on Wolford. Grabs him by the shoulders and he's looking down at him, his muzzle against his forehead. He's sniffing him. Wolford. Do not vomit on me. Zaldrin tells me that you are concerned about the Reavers. Oh, no, not. Bacho turns him around. <laughs> so, his back, so he's got him to the back. As and then, soon as you turn him, it just comes out. Now, Wolford feels a, a warm liquid striking him on the feet and the back of his legs and ankles. I've marked you as mine, Wolford. They won't bother you anymore. And then he walks away. 
And he just, oh, it smells awful. And begins vomiting yet again. Uh, the See, rest of the crew. I keep telling you, Bacho solves problems and you just don't trust the way he solves problems. But he solves problems. You have problems, he solves them for you. You should really thank him. Thank him for peeing on me. Mm. Whatever works. You no were afraid will... of reavers. Mm. Now no one will take your heart. Be afraid of them. Okay, thank you, Bacho. Zaldrin, I'm still sticking with you. Uh, so Zaldrin, you have a uh, Woford sticking next to you that now smells like wolfkin urine. <laughs> oh, great. Fortunately, the cold weather means that stenches do not travel that well. Uh, so you only get a whiff of it occasionally. Uh, Gunk, you have something? Yes. So if I see that Mirren is still sick today, I think that Gunk, he has some skill in healing. He's not great, but I would like to tend to her uh, medical aid. So basically what this will let me do is that I can roll when her next one comes up. I can roll a healing test against the virulence of the disease. So it's it's my it's my healing roll instead of her endurance. Okay. Is that, uh, it, you, it's, if you scroll down a little bit on the poisons and the disease page, it's it's there under medical aid. Oh yeah, it's the next page. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, that's the problem with looking at one page on a PDF. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So would you like to say that you did that that morning? We can wreck on that. Uh, I would. I mean, to be honest, I think it makes sense that he probably would have thought she was okay. And then okay, seeing that yeah. she's still sick the next day, I think he'll probably tend to her at that point. Fair enough. All right. So uh, day breaks and the crew immediately begins packing up camp uh, to begin traveling on both ships. Uh, divisions are being made as to how you'd like to split up the crew. Uh, one eye assures you that the Reavers will not mutiny. However, Quite a few of your previous crew are not so sure about that, uh, as there's quite a bit of tension. Reavers are the ones that were their biggest threat uh, beforehand. So how would you guys like to split up the crews here? Uh, sailing two ships, you're going to be a bit short-handed on both, but you can absolutely do it. Reavers on one, crew on the second. Bacha will stay on the whatever ship the majority of the Reavers are on. That's the ship Bacha will be on because... He wants to keep make sure they stay in line. Okay. Uh, one Eye will stay with them as well. Uh, so we've got Reavers on one hand, your crew on the rest. Uh, what about the rest of you? Do you care which ship you're going to be on? Zaldrin will be with Woford on the non-Reaver ship. Uh, I think it would probably make sense for Mirren and Woford to be near each other. We have like a sick room or something so we can keep an eye on them, keep them isolated from others. So Why must if, you make me suffer when I'm already sick? <laughs> this is what you get for not properly cleaning the blood before you I put it in the saffron. didn't even like, get to cook. I, uh, that's that's probably why you're so sick because you didn't cook it. Like you are just you are a halfling. You can't. It seems like a really illogical like argument. This. Almost like you're trying to avoid blame. I don't know. Okay, okay. Let's listen. Do I look sick? No, I don't look sick. So how could it be my fault? Right? <laughs> just saying. Perhaps you should grow some fur because I don't see any fur circular. people here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's get into the travel roles. As a uh, gunk, you said you're going to stay near Mirren to heal her the next day, so it would make sense that you're going to. Uh, would be on it be that okay well. to to designate a spot on the ship to like a sick ward with Absolutely. Mirren and yeah, Welford? You can have a makeshift tent for both of them. Yeah, and so that's what that's what he'll be doing. So I think he'll he'll you know give up the the lead the way roles and stuff. And uh, it, it's going to take probably two or three days to reach Orokoa. So you'll have time to like transfer between ships if you guys ever decide to do that. Um, but let's go ahead and get travel rolls going. Uh, we're going to want one for each ship now. Uh, so Bacho, you are going mm -hmm. to be the one handling that and Arngrim will handle either keep watch or lead the way, whichever one you want. Uh, Gunk, you normally do lead the way on the other ship uh, and Zaldrin normally does keep watch. Is that going to be the same? Well, we can use Ebba for one of the ships, right? Uh, Ebba will give you a plus one. 
if you think I can do both, if you think I can lead the way and like tend to Marin and Wilford, then I'll do that. It's up to you, whatever yeah, you think. Uh, the, the tending is supposed to happen the next day. So you leading okay. the way, like guiding them, you can have the makeshift tent nearby too. Gotcha. Uh, you can absolutely do both. Okay. All right. Bacho will lead the way on the other ship. Okay. So Arngrim will uh, work on keeping watch. I got one six. And I'm not going to push it because I got a bunch of wands. Soldier got a success on scouting. Okay. Uh, that's three sixes on my uh, lead the way roll. Okay. Uh, and sorry, just looking up uh, one eye stats here. Uh, he got a success as well. So everyone got a success. Uh, the first. Uh, quarter day passes mostly uneventfully. Uh, you're going through uh, areas here that are a little more untamed. You start passing uh, lush forests along the coastline, uh, and you know that you're reaching towards uh, the tip of this island that you can round the bend, and you'll be on the whale road uh, well on your way to Orokoa. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the next quarter day uh, rolls in. Uh, no sixes, but no ones, so I'm going to push. One success. Uh, two, on, one, two on gunks, lead the way. One success on after pushing it, and still no ones. Okay, so everyone succeeded again. Uh, one I succeeded as well. Uh, and you finally make it past the, the tip here. Uh, would you like to continue sailing into the night, or would you like to anchor along the coastline, uh, get some rest, and keep going? Basically, how fast do you feel like moving? There, there's not going to be more danger or less either way, especially with Gunk able to see at night. Uh, mm. The the other ship would just have to basically follow uh, the ship that Gunk's on. I'm sorry. Pacho's fine with going another quarter day. Yeah, so is and I believe is it the, is the proper term commodore? Would Gunk be considered a commodore right now because he has multiple <laughs> ships? Yeah, that is yes, yeah. yeah he would be commodore, commodore. Gunk is fine with going another. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's get some rolls again. One wow. success. I'm gonna push. I didn't get anything. Yeah, push. I got to push again too. Okay, I got one. Uh, I got one six and three ones, so I took three points of wits damage, wow. but I did get a single success. I will not be pushing again before we rest. <laughs> so night is falling here. Uh, we're in the third quarter day, so it's definitely getting very dark out. Uh, one ship is following the other ship, and as you're rounding the bend here, you're finally on the whale road. Uh, as you travel a little bit closer, you move towards the other landmass, the landmass that has Orokoa. Uh, you pass a bay, and uh, the sailors, uh, we're going to focus on Gunk Ship here because Arngrim failed his keep watch roll. Uh, the sailors know this bay fairly well. Uh, it's a place that they often anchor at when they're in this area. It's a risky place to anchor because you're so close to the reavers but at the same time it's better to be protected than out in the water with uh, their uh, ships about the strange thing about this bay is that it is currently lit up with dozens of large fires uh, there are is some sort of massive camp here uh, that uh, you can see that there are shapes moving across the fires and with that dimly lit glow, you see that there are quite a few longships as well that are beached along the coastline. Looking closer, uh, I would want another scouting roll, probably from Gunk because you have night vision. Can I just go ahead and cast Farsight to see if I can? Absolutely, that's a great opportunity to do that. Yeah, let's, and I'll it's, use my. It's also fire. <laughs> uh, well, this it's more, other bow roll. Yeah, it's more like a distance thing. Um. I'm going to use my yeah, my helm, uh, my crown to to yep, reduce the, the willpower, willpower cost. Uh, so so power level two reaches across the same map hex. Would that be yeah? Usable that's in this case. Okay, so I'll do power level two. 
So I just have to spend the one willpower and then, okay, I'm good. No mishap this time. Uh, and everyone's diseased again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So I accidentally uh, summoned the demon to the boat. I, this magic's crazy. <laughs> it's like, I keep hoping for that. With this of... farsight, uh, two things uh, cross your mind. The first one is you are extremely lucky that you all decided to push through the night as you would have been extremely visible to this large fleet of reavers. You look, there are 20, 30 ships uh, beached each of them with a crew of 25. Sometimes they have more passengers. There could easily be a thousand Reavers camped here. The last time you've ever heard of a fleet this big being gathered would be the actual invasion where they first came from across the Southern Sea. Normally, you, it, it would be rare to find three Reaver ships working together, uh, let alone 50 like you see now. You can't necessarily see if they're uh, like led by someone because they're all in camp right now, but there are some tents that are nicer than others. Uh, you can see that there are some that are look to be barking orders than others. Uh, as you wait or as you're passing by, you're able to see more and more, and you do see Ornolf the Unwashed walking through the camp as well. Uh, this large white furred reaver i say white furred but it's actually dyed a dark brown because he never washes off the blood of his victims you see that it's all clumped and matted together with your magical sight uh very recognizable because you've seen him before when you were taken captive by him okay i think how, how far in terms of ga in, in game terms is the other ship from is, is bacho's ship from ours I would say because you're going at night, you would have to be fairly close together. Uh, okay. So let's just say varying between 100 to 300 yards. Would we consider it long, like long distance, like in terms we of, can say of long range? Distance, yeah. So then I'm going to cast another spell uh, to Baccio, uh telepathy, so that I can convey these thoughts to, to, to Bacho so that the other ship is aware of everything I just saw. Uh, would also would it also be fair to say that I probably have something that of Bacho's if I own like like you know we we've shared food and supplies and all Bacho, that kind of stuff yeah oh absolutely absolutely okay. I mean more more packs so yes for right. sure so that'll make it easier for me to up the up the power level um actually I don't even think I need to do the power level if I'm sending thoughts uh, let me just do the willpower. Okay, uh, that's a five six five on my roll for spell, nice. so it actually increases the power. It doesn't actually do anything um, since I'm not trying to do damage to Pacho. I'm just trying to send my own thoughts. Um, so I communicate in my thoughts. I focus them as clearly as possible. Everything that I just saw, who I just saw, uh, how badly outnumbered we probably are, I would suspect, and how we probably need to continue pushing on. Can Bacho respond telepathically to you, or is it just one-way communication? It's just one way. I just send my thoughts to you. Bacho, do you disseminate this information among your crew? Mm. Bacho just goes to one eye. Keep the Reavers' heads down and focused on sailing. We've got an enemy Reaver fleet in the cove. We need to slip past them. We need to be smart. When we hunt, we only need to hunt the prey that we can take, and this prey is too great for our current numbers. And, Bacho, even your ship can see this massive number of fires in the distance. You just can't see whose ships they belong to, who's actually moving. And and Bacho, does not hears... tell, Bacho does not tell One Eye who it is. He just says it's a Reaver fleet. Right. Uh, when... One I hears it's a Reaver fleet. You see his lip twitch. There will be time to hunt them. The ones responsible. The ones that we need to kill. But we're smart wolves. Who know we need to be upwind. 
and coming at our prey when they're the weakest, not the strongest. If there's a fleet of reavers, there is only one who is feared enough to command them all. You know who I speak of. I know who we speak of. But again, we do not have the numbers to take him. And I will not throw the life of the pack away in a useless effort of some pup for vengeance. When we take him and take his heart, it will be on our terms, not his. We have the cover of darkness. We know where he is. He does not expect us. There are a thousand wolves and you think to get in. You submitted to the pack. We sail on. His time me, will come. Uh, manipulation, and you can use your intimidation here. That's good, because otherwise I was going to fail super hard. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, Samir could totally get in there. No one would ever notice him. <laughs> yeah. No possible oh, yeah, of course. Way. They couldn't see him. It would be ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I will. I've got one success, but I'm going to go ahead and push it. Uh, two successes. Not great. I will listen to you now, but if this costs me my vengeance, you will be the next head I claim. Ah. Oh, one eye, if you want to dance in the circle, all you need to do is name the place, and I'll lift my howl to the air and taste your heart's blood within moments. But I would rather have you up my side. I vowed vengeance against him as well, and we will hunt him together on our time. Whether you actually intimidated or not, you can tell that you've cowed him uh, into submission. And he doesn't necessarily give the look of fear, but he does give you the nod of subservience in a way. Uh, not necessarily respect, maybe begrudging respect. Uh, and he doesn't give you any problems after that. He continues to uh, command the crew, uh, speaking in their language, telling them to push harder. If anything, he seems to be pushing them harder than they were before. Uh, there are a few times that you start catching up with Gunk's ship, uh, getting much closer than is actually safe. You have to tell him to bring it back. Uh, those kinds of things. Uh, <laughs> get off my ass. Quit tailgating. <laughs> Gunk's just staring in the real room. Who is this guy? Come on. Come on. He's got his brights on. Too. Where, are you, where, are you, where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? God. <laughs> All right. So you decided to push on another day or another quarter day then to get further away, uh -huh. right? And yep. this is going to take you very close to Orokoa. And you have two options here. Uh, if you're looking at the map, uh, you can see that there is one inlet that will take you to the Fetid Lands, these fire lands. Uh, Zaldrin, you would know that these lands are heated by uh, magma very close to the surface. Uh, mm -hmm. They can actually burn your feet as you're walking on them if you uh, aren't wearing shoes. Your next option is the second inlet. And if you take that one, you'll actually get closer to Orokoa and you won't need to travel over land as much. However, those are the Ashlands and nothing survives in the Ashlands. Uh, all life has been uh, snuffed out by the massive uh, piles of ash that continually fall from the active volcano that Orokoa is built upon. Uh, the wind always pushes it that direction and nothing can survive. You're just traveling through, so that's not necessarily a problem. But the safer route is fetid lands, but not the fastest route. So is like, are, is there like a trade road from Orokoa to to these inlets, or or how do how do they move goods over land from Orokoa? Uh, mostly, uh, trade from Orokoa happens by land to the north. Uh, they go north towards Kotsum, uh, and they trade with people there. Uh, getting there by ship doesn't happen that often because, let's be honest, most people don't want to hang out with the orcs. Uh, but there are uh, places that you could uh, land safely, both in the Fetid Lands and the Ashlands. Bacho, of course, will uh, defer to the Commodore. Uh, so I would say Zaldrin's feedback would, prob would basically be like the faster route might be the wise choice given our current circumstance which would be the second inlet right. yes okay I don't think well, I can walk very much right now 
I know. I don't really. I mean, I suppose Ven could carry her or something across the fetid lands. You, you can help her, right? Uh, I'm better at inflicting death than preventing it, but I, I do think that there are some things I might be able to help her with. Yes. We might have to could, purge her stomach of all of the rotten saffron that she gorged herself on. I, I didn't eat any saffron. That's, that's a Why lie. am I sick? Soldier, he's lying I, to you. I don't know, Wolford. Sometimes, uh, sometimes, you know, shit luck, man. I don't know. <laughs> when it rains, it pours. All right, let's hope and it's not raining. I'll tend to you both. Like, been, have to do it's been everything. pouring out of his mouth. It's. I, I thought that like Wolfkin piss earlier smelled yeah, bad. That's, that's 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 not good either. I. Yeah, that, that's oh, for bad. To, I've got to to lead lead the fleet. I've got to summon you know the the the, the undead to give a. And I've got to heal people now. And gee, oh goodness, you know it's fine. This is this this is why you have the crown. Heavy is the head and all that. All right. All right. You are right. That's this so we chose yes. the Ashlands. Uh, let's go ahead and get our travel rolls here as you're pushing through the night. It is the fourth quarter of the day here. By the way, we're going to need to rest before we start marching across the Ashlands. Yes. Uh, unless you want to be sleepy, in which case that's fine. I do not. I do not want to be sleepy, and I do not want to have this much wits damage going into... And uh, I failed. Zaldrin, because it's nighttime, I'm going to say minus one on the keep watch. One eye is getting that as well. And I also failed and cannot push it because it would break me. You failed on lead the way. Oh, yeah. I'm good. I had a success. I can't. I don't want to push, though. I have a bunch of ones. Uh, Zaldrin will need to push. 1-1 one, one so far. Uh, one damage to wits, one success. Okay. Uh, one eye succeeded at his keep watch as well. Uh, let's go ahead and see what kind of mishap pops up for uh, leading the way at sea. Stuck in the ice. So, Bacho, it's so difficult to see, and you're trying to follow the route that Gunk is moving through. However, the water shift, uh, the ice moves, and there's a point where your ship just lurches and grinds as you uh, get yourself stuck on an iceberg. Zaldrin, Bunch. because you succeeded at scouting, I will say that you notice this as it's happening, uh, as you were keeping watch. Sorry, Bacho. Bacho just yells, throw me an axe and give me the three strongest backs. We'll hack our way free in moments. Uh, yeah, they. you have plenty of axes. If anything, you've got more weapons than a uh, crew at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and Three of the Reavers uh, jump up uh, and they start hacking away with you. Go ahead and make a might roll with a plus one for the hut. All right. Uh, one, two, three successes. Three. I okay. can push it if necessary. No, I think that's uh, fair to say that you're able to uh, chop your way free. Normally, you'd be able to move three hexes. I think it's fair to say with that delay, you're only moving two on this quarter mm -hmm. day. Uh, so you have made it uh, rounding the point to this inlet. And here, uh, light is first uh, coming through the, the ashy clouds above. You still have the ash and snow falling. Uh, it doesn't feel any warmer to you yet. You're not close enough to the volcano. But as you're looking up, you can see these cliffs in front of you. Uh, they stand 50, 60, maybe 70 feet above the waterline. And there is a hill of ash on top of those cliffs. No, it's not. A, it is a hill, but it's covering a building. 
those of you who have been here before would know that this is Kefelok, which was once a temple to Benegar, one of the gods. Uh, and centuries ago, this was a grand sight to behold. It was a cathedral made with walls of living trees. Uh, the branches uh, wove together into a solid roof. Uh, the trunks were so wide and sturdy, they fused together. And even hundreds of years later since its abandonment, it still has this aura of strength and resilience uh, as it's managing to just barely stay above the ash that so badly wants to bury it. But now it also has this aura of sadness. Uh, you can still see in the bark that there are sigils and prayers uh, carved into them. But the branches of these trees are twisting and turning, and they almost look as if they're grasping above the earth, just trying to claw at the surface to remain above instead of be bu being buried and forgotten. And that is our first fourth quarter day here. Uh, it is now morning of the second day of uh, Breedall. Do you guys want to keep pushing, or would you like to anchor here? If the Reaver fleet doesn't move, you'll be fine. If they move, they'll likely see you. Yes, we push on, then. Okay. Uh, so we are going to just uh, take Sleepy here until you uh, get to rest, but you are very close, so it won't be too long before that happens if you don't get any more mishaps. Should I be taking Sleepy as well right now? Did we do the Healy Heal? Sorry, did uh, I miss that? You have not slept, so you don't get to heal yet. Uh, Mirren, it's fair to say that you've slept. You haven't okay. been uh, doing any of these. <laughs> no. Uh, and not, because not it's the next day, we need a virulence roll for you and Woford. Uh, and it's going to be against the healing of Gunk here. Yeah. Good um, luck. I'm going to take you, some... Would you like... Since... I feel partially responsible for this. <laughs> a little tiny bit. Just, Why couldn't I mean, you have just gotten Mirren, hungry again? Mirren you could have gotten told hungry. Me, will, Mirren told me to transfer willpower. Okay, so I, just saying. I, I get way too much of it. You definitely should. But like two. I, will, I will take I it. Will yeah, yeah, yeah. drag you. If... if if Steven allows, I, I I I can tend you know I would tend to Wofer too, begrudgingly. Uh, let's Ooh, say two different. You feel roles, guilty for that one? one? Yeah, I don't feel guilty. I just kind of well, I was hoping it would just like you know hurt him a little bit, kill him faster. I'm trying to kill him. I could kill him anytime I want, really. But like <laughs> the virulence roll was one, so you have to beat a one. All right, sorry, I'm not used to rolling healing. One sec, that's empathy. <laughs> yeah, well, you're about to raise the dead people feel not, uh, not Gunk's best. Uh, <laughs> Are you rolling more than skill. three dice? Yes, I am. I am. I'm okay. rolling six. So. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. you for the bets. Uh, I need, uh, you said I needed two, right? To win? You need two. Yes. All right, I'll push. Uh, I got three. I did take an empathy, though, in the process. But Mirren is healed. Yeah. Yay. Better out than in. Yeah. I'm, oh, God, this is disgusting. Oh, you're, goodness. You're so bad at this. Why are I, you so bad at this? I, you all tell me to kill things. You don't tell me to heal things. Wait, like, oh, you deal oh. with bodies all the time with your playing. But I don't care that they whether they live or die. They're already you're dead the most of the time. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. If you were to pass, I would have raised you. You could have st still hung out with us. It would have been fine. <laughs> I guess Aaron, that's, I'm glad that's you're okay. feeling better. Thanks, Aldrin. Uh, I blame I God. for seal. What are you talking about? How this is everything's, you know, heavy is the head that wears the crown. got cold hands, is... too. It was really uncomfortable. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll try <laughs> Wofords, which is slightly Are you taking nerfed. any uh, extras? Man, for Wofords? We just got five. All right, fine. Yes, use them on Woford. Thank you. God, seriously? All right. <laughs> Only five dice this time. And I need two, right? Man, uh, do yes, I two. push? God, come on. <laughs> yeah, I think you need three, don't you? No, I need. No, three, it was virulence two. one. So he just okay. needs to got one. it. But I took another empathy damage. This is this is 
this is ridiculous. <laughs> That's exactly how Gunk you feels. That emotion right there. Anyway. I know. This is this is him right now. God, what is wrong with you? You hairless people, clean up after yourselves. God, this whole place, what is this? Oh, there is vomit everywhere. There, I don't even know. Where did this even come from? Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, is that, I'm sorry. That, I tried to get over, but I just couldn't. What? So you just wallow in it? I'm up, I'm up, I'm up on deck trying to make sure we're not taken over by reavers, and you're wallowing in your own... I, well, he can oh, he can clean up after himself now that he's feeling better. I was not going to clean up after him. Yes, you Could are cleaning get, up after this Wolfer and Mirin. Could we get one of the crew to clean up? I'm still not feeling well. You are one of the. Crew. I just I have to wash my clothes, so if they could clean the deck, you know that'd be great. Do you want me to put the 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 the, the disease back in you? Because I can in fact do that. Are you the one that diseased me in the first place? Of course not. Come on. What is wrong with you? We have been hanging out with all these reaver folk and these sailors, and we are on an iceberg that hasn't really been explored for a while. I'm sure you just picked up something rare. But you just you just said you could do it. Because I can control life and death. Come on. How, how many times do I have to tell you this? Wilford, I've been smelling the piss that Bacho put on your feet, and I've been smelling your throw up, and I've been smelling everything coming out of everywhere. Can you just please? I will make sure that no reavers kill you while you clean up. Okay. Okay. Anything for you, Aldrin. You know, we're tight. Thank you, Wolford. Gunk will look at Zaltrin and raise an eyebrow. You're tight. Okay. Okay. And then he you, leaves at that point. You mm. know how this goes. And you just hear him, you just hear him kind of like as he's climbing up the stairs back to the deck. Zaldrin and Wolford see. All right, so let's get our travel rolls here. You are all sleepy, so you can't recover wits uh, until you do sleep. But that shouldn't you, affect too much for traveling here. Well, you, you also take a point of wits damage when you become sleepy. So, uh, yeah. is it when you That's become or the next day? Problematic. Um, it says each day. Well, I would assume that would be the day you question. become sleepy. But. Yeah, let's go ahead. You suffer one each day. Go ahead and take the wits. You'll be able to sleep soon enough. So let's make it dangerous. All right. Okay. So uh, I'm down to one point of wits at the moment. So this is and me too. There's going to be three dice. It's yeah, that's a fail, and I can't push it. So it's just a fail. I'm going to uh, take for an lead the way. Yeah. Uh, that is also a fail, and I also can't push because I have one wits. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, Gunk, this is gonna hinge on you because they're trying to follow you in uh, Gunk, Gunk succeeded. Would having extra successes help, perhaps? I think it would case? be fair to say yes in this case because you All are right. a caravan of sorts. A All fleet right, I will, for the I, will push. I, I have one success. I will. I will push. Okay, I got an eight on my D eight, my artifact dice. So that's uh, three total successes, but I took a point okay. of wits damage in the process. I think we should still do a mishap, but we'll say that you don't get lost uh, with the extra successes. Uh, Leak. Actually, that makes sense because, Bacho, we have not been rolling for your harpoon. Uh, so, Bacho, it's not necessarily your fault that this is happening. You're following Gunk. The light has come up. You can see uh, mostly clearly. It's gloomy, but you can see the, the outline of the ship. And the the boat just lurches once again uh, and springs a leak. Uh, the leak must be repaired with a crafting roll before you can continue. Uh, if your damage is not repaired, the ship will sink. Uh, so these reavers immediately start bailing out using helms and buckets and anything they can. Uh, fortunately, these reavers are also sailors and they are experienced at crafting as well. Uh, so they're going to start patching up the, the leak as well. Uh, so go ahead and roll crafting with plus two for them. All right. Yeah, I taught you crafting. That's not. I got three successes. Uh, so, is that okay. good enough? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, you're going to continue sailing as this uh, 
ship is being patched. Uh, and it's not necessarily fully repaired, but the, the Reavers have techniques of wedging uh, planks and wood and canvas surrounding them into wherever a hole pops up. Uh, and it doesn't prevent the leak from slowly filling, but it really slows it down. Uh, so it's easy to bail and continue sailing as you go. And a lot of them throw the ballast, the rocks at the center of the ship overboard. So you're not riding as though in the water. Uh, it means the ship is a bit more rocky as you're going. Rocky. Uh, less rocky, but more rocky. The ship is more unbalanced. Uh, it's a rougher ride, but you're able to continue traveling. We'll go ahead and plop you up. And you guys have made it to the Ashlands. Now, if the Reaver fleet was going to come through here, obviously they would see you, but it's highly unlikely that they would, and it would be at least a couple days before they get there because they would have to tear down that camp. A massive fleet like that moves very slowly. So you feel fairly confident that you're not in danger, but there is a risk very close by, a threat very close by. Uh, is this where you're going to be sleeping? Yes. Okay. I don't have much choice because if I didn't, the next day I'd break anyway from the wind's mm -hmm. damage from being sleeping. So, uh, you sleep for the afternoon and you wake up in the evening. Then, the second day of breed all. Several people are keeping watch. Uh, it's a rotating watch. Sometimes the reavers even keep watch as well. You don't know necessarily how far you can trust them but you haven't seen any signs that they will turn on you immediately. Whether they would if they're confronted with their own people, that's a different story. But as of right now, they seem to be perfectly fine working for you, especially you, Bacho, you showing their sh your strength to them. They really respected that. As some of you are keeping watch uh, while others sleep, just on rotation, uh, you hear reports of eyes moving about in shadows with glowing eyes. Uh, the ash is so thick and dark here that the land is really black. And it just, in this gloom, the daylight, it looks as if there are shadows that occasionally move back and forth. And uh, the crew from Terran, especially, incredibly superstitious, immediately start murmuring about ghosts and things like that. Uh, thinking that this land might be cursed. Uh, the Reavers don't seem too concerned about it. Zaldrin uh, will attempt to kind of explain, like, this is her homeland, so she'll kind of attempt to explain to the other sailors, like, Zaldrin, how to give put me a everything in context. Uh, and I should say plus two, because it is your homeland. Lore, you say... Sorry, did you say plus two? Plus two, yes. <laughs> uh, I'll push. And no, this is after I you slept, so I don't know if you got that. I did. I have forgotten all of the stories of my homeland. Okay. Uh, so just the basics then that every orc would know is that there are rumors about ghosts and spirits in the Ashlands. Uh shadows that can literally drain the life out of you. However, you think they're just stories that are told to children to scare them into sleep. You've never encountered anything like that on, on your own to make you think it's real. And that's basically the tactic that she'll take is just you believe everything you're, you heard the elders sing to you when you were a child do not understand that these are metaphors just to make sure that rules are followed. Not every angry woman and howling wolf and creature in the stories actually exist. It's fairy tales, children's tales. Nothing to be afraid of. The crew listens to you and they mostly take it to heart because they feel kind of foolish. Uh, thinking that it could be, you know, just their imagination. But at the same time, every now and then someone says, over there, uh, and the whole crew looks and they start scanning. Occasionally, you yourself think you might see movement, but it also could just be wind pushing piles of ash. It, it's really hard to 
uh, see anything specific. So you guys have a choice now. Uh, it is evening. You've just rested. Uh, it's getting dark. You can choose to travel through the night, and you will reach Orakoa by morning. Uh, or you can rest one more night and then reach it uh, during the daylight tomorrow. We just rested, so we would go, I would think. Travel through the night? Mm, how about we take this quarter day and train yeah. and then travel in the morning? Plus, we do. We wouldn't have recovered our wits, too, because for those of us that were sleepy, we have to clear the condition before we yep. recover our wits. Oh, that's so right, that's right. survival yep. checks, if that's okay. what this is going to be, we're still going to be down on those. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so what kind of training would you guys be doing as your uh, crew are setting up camp? Uh, it's very basic. Most of them are going to be sleeping on the ships. Uh, you still have to decide how many of them are going to Oracle with you or staying with the ships to guard, but that's a problem for the morning. Uh, what are you doing now to pass the time? Anyone have anything to start with? Bacho is focusing on the recent battles he's been in and the Ashlands, and he's he's coming to terms with the heart and his own fear over what has happened in the past, and he's He's focusing on on truly mastering it as a warrior should. So all I'm doing is spending the experience points to go from rank two to rank three of fearless. So I don't ever have to make fear checks anymore because that just seems like the way to go. Okay. Um. And for fearless, uh, let's say you make a wits roll here as well because I believe wits is the one that you have to do for fear attacks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, just a straight wits roll. And it, it's low stakes, so don't worry too much about it. Uh, one six. One six. You are helping keep watch, uh, especially with all these stories about shadows and ghosts nearby. Uh, you venture a bit further into the darkness to show that you're not afraid to master your own emotions. You stay calm, cool, collected. And then you also see a pair of eyes blink open in the distance but now that it's darker it's much easier to see they're glowing red uh, they're probably 300 yards away from you but at this distance uh, the glow is just enough they're just two little pinpricks against the backdrop of ash and darkness you see them staring at you and then they close they turn away and you don't see them again. Bacho, not not using willpower, but just is, is scenting the air to see if he can smell anything unusual. Yeah, I think that would be a survival check. Uh, one, two sixes. You smell sulfur. Not just what you would expect from the volcano nearby. It smells as if you're standing upon it. It's that strong. The wind carries it. Uh, it feels like it could be within arm's reach. And you know, if you went further into the darkness, that, that stench would just become stronger and stronger until with your wolfkin senses especially, it would become overpowering. Uh, it could really hurt you being so close to that uh, acidic sort of smell. When Bacho pulls back, he goes to find Gunk. Or brother. You find him easily enough? Yeah, I would say Gunk is probably resting, so you would be able to find him pretty easily. And Bacho will wait until until Gunk's awake, he's not going to wake him up. But he's he would be sitting there at the at basically at the foot of Gunk's sleeping mat. Oh, what are you doing? Mm. What is wrong? What happened? There's, there's something within the ash, a deep brimstone and sulfur. It's not natural. So I wanted to, I wanted to guard your sleep to make sure that you were safe, my fur brother. I do not know what it is, but I think it is connected to the glowing eyes that others have seen. Uh, the sailors have seen what the... No, I have seen it as well, my brother. 
And at that, Gunk will actually start taking it seriously. Where? Show me. I'll, I'll take him back out. 300 yards off this point. It was staring me down as I made my way through the ash fields along our camp to keep us safe. Gunk will peer out. Is there anything out there right now? You could give me a scouting roll uh, because okay. you can see in darkness. Everyone else, I would say it's too far to tell. Uh, okay. Uh, would my would my rest have gone through yet so I can get my wits back or should I just roll as though I'm still not recovered? Uh, we can say it went through. It's okay. Okay. Okie doke. Uh, I'll push. You can get anything. Uh, two sixes. So two successes on the push. You don't see glowing eyes, but there are points where you see shadows. Uh, look to be humanoid-esque creatures. You can't really tell how big they are at this distance. Uh, they don't seem brawny or broad. They seem thinner with very large heads. And you feel like they're not spirits because you see legs and arms very defined in this darkness with the backdrop of ash. They appear to be walking about. Curious. Well, they are not ghosts. They're corporeal appears. Where is Zaldrin? Is this not her homeland? Does she not know of these things? She's probably... She said... She told the crew and all that uh, these were simply old wives' tales. Wives' tales? I can see you know. it right there. You see? It moves on. I'm sorry. I know you cannot see as well as I, but there is one shape there. It is moving to the east. The other one there. To the north. They are very... Uh, do not look very large. I do not necessarily sure that they are uh, will overpower us, but you know, we do not necessarily know that they are yeah, our enemy either. Perhaps they are mm. something curious. Perhaps well, if, they, if they do move against us, my claw and teeth will be fine. I am sure. Be careful of your fur. They are made from ash. I wonder if that means they are mm, somehow Power they're fed by this colossal and he's like looking up at you know the range in the distance uh where we know it's volcanic right that's like common knowledge yeah yeah it's common knowledge they might be some sort of creature born of this uh infernal place i do not know but uh, as long as they do not approach us i think we are fine for now but extra watches on perhaps to make sure mm. Bacho's ears go back as Gunk starts talking about the supernatural. I am sure that you will ask the Earth Mother to guard us. I have faith in your faith, brother. I, uh, you will be uh, comforted to know that uh, such a request is no longer needed. She will seek, seek us out and ensure our safety. We have... And he kind of looks around, makes sure no one's looking. We have something that she wants. And I feel that she will ensure our safety until I am able to deliver it to her. Mm. Then I will guard your back, brother, until such time. And that I you can my deliver friend. it. Yes. And with just, that, uh, yeah. the watches... You know, get doubled uh Mirren, yes what were you gonna do uh real quick um since we are on a boat i anticipate that the sailors have their own little violins and flutes and and perform when they're in their spare time yeah they, they've got all sorts of drums and flutes that they can perform with there aren't many musicians left but yes. we'll say that there's at least one of them uh so Mirren will like start stalking him when she starts to feel better um she's not discreet like bacho or gunk uh but she's like hiding behind a barrel and then topples it over and then runs after him um oh. eventually Mirren, uh, what are you doing back there uh uh i needed to move this barrel oh let me get that for you i'll get it 
And okay. um, the whole crew loves you because you provide them with actually good quality food. They just uh, so have to suffer to two days, and... two days of their own cooking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So th they're very happy to see you moving about again. Um, so you you know how to play instruments, right? Oh, just barely. Uh, I, I'm not any good, but yeah, I can play the flute a little bit. Um, I've I've got this, and I need to learn how to play it. And she'll pull out a varnished bone flute. Wow, that is that's beautiful. You're uh, giving this to me? No, no, no. I. It, I need to learn how to play it. <laughs> um, oh, uh, yeah. Well, here, here, let me try it. He reaches okay. out for it. She'll she'll give it to him to to so that he can show her. And uh, while you're doing that, I'm gonna need a roll from you. Uh oh. As as you try, you start handing it to him. I need an empathy roll as you don't want to let go of it. Okay, just straight empathy. Okay, okay. Straight empathy. Uh, what dice will not betray me? So poorly. Uh, that, ooh. Oh, God, okay. Um, I don't have a success. I have two ones, and I might need to push. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no. Uh, no, actually, d d didn't you have your own instrument? I'm sorry. I, I can't. Uh, it's really precious to me, and I can't I can't let it go right now. So you failed, right? Yeah. So it actually requires the owner to fail an empathy roll. I did. And if you want to get rid of it now, it'll cost you a willpower point as you push back the urge. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I can I can spend a willpower to to see if I can. OK, no, I, I can do this here. I won't look and uh, I will burn a willpower. And the sailor uh, grabs it, almost snatches it from you a little greedily. Mm -hmm. uh, something about it has attracted him as well. And uh -oh. he looks it over and it it looks to be a normal flute. Like it, it's very simple. It's varnished, you know, it's well-maintained, but there's nothing truly elegant about it. Uh, and he begins to, to start playing it as best he can. Uh, he's not the best musician, but he's capable. He's playing it. Okay. And he, you can tell in front of you, he's already becoming attached to it. Okay, um, I'm I'm gonna and she'll like actually just physically grab it and start yeah. to pull it. Okay, uh, gonna... I want a might roll here, and this is going to be contested. Uh oh. Let me pull up my sailor <laughs> stat box here. I might take a an audience dice for this one. Sure thing. Take two Thank if you two. want. And I will take two audience dice for this one. Might is not something I'm very good at. Uh, They're not very good at it either. If it makes you feel better. Kingly. I'm yeah, and then my dice have not been kind to me today. I have one success. I'll be. I am going to push this, even though I have two ones. Ones of the one of the ones is on the audience dice. Uh, okay, there we go. I have three sixes, and I'm taking a one point of strength damage. Okay. Uh he does not want to part with it, but you <laughs> jump so quickly and you just grab it and you're uh, putting your entire weight into it because he was holding it higher above you and it just slips out of his hands. And as you pull it away, he actually reaches to try and take it back, but you're able to pull it back further away. And he kind of like regains his senses after a moment. Sorry, I just... I, I was in the middle of the song, so I, I wanted to it's, keep going. It's... Yeah... It's alluring, I know, but um, I just uh, th th thank you for showing me music. I I gotta go, and she'll turn around and scamper off. You scamper away, and you actually see him watching you quite often for the rest of the night. Oh, but if you want to say you trained your performance, that's fine. Great, thanks, Zaldrin. What are you up to? Uh. So so, um, Zaldrin was feeling a little bit foggy earlier 
when we were kind of having this conversation about like what she remembers um, from like the stories. So I feel like she's just going to like, speaking of what were those songs? And so she's going to like try to think about like what were the songs that she heard as a kid. So she's, she was like, Oh crap, I've got no lore. Maybe I should actually try to see if I remember some stuff. (laughs) Start reliving your childhood. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and make another lore check then uh, as a mm. refresher. After I got the one or before? Uh, after, we'll say. Okay. I'm not going to add any audience because it'll be funny if she fails. Wait, hold on. Why didn't that... I put one, then why didn't it take it? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I took a wits damage and I failed. All yeah, right, so right. failed and a wits damage. Uh, <laughs> I'm still going to give you something, but it's not going to be that useful. Um, sure. You start going through all your childhood memories and like nursery rhymes and all the mother goose stories that the orcs have, and your brain just gets caught on something just inane, idiotic. Uh, and it's like the ABCs uh, in your own language. And the one that just keeps popping out is S is for smoldering. And there's a little song to it. And that one line just starts ringing through your head over and over. And so she's, you know, updating Ven's do because that's what she does. Um, and so like while she's doing you know, it's sort of like the reverse braid this time. And so she's just like keeps singing like S is for smolder, S is for smolder, S is for smolder. All right. And that quarter day passes. Uh, we're going to say that the night also passes uneventfully. Whatever these shadows, these creatures are, they don't seem to be intent on attacking your ship or coming any closer. Uh, There are several times sailors seem to spot a pair of eyes, uh, but they're always at a distance, uh, as if they're more curious than anything else. Light begins to dawn again, uh, barely pushing through the clouds overhead. Here in the Ashlands, the veil is even thicker than anywhere else. Uh, The clumps of ash falling uh, are three, four times as big as you're normally used to. But there's also a warmth here. Uh, You've shed a couple of layers. You don't have the great furs on anymore. You're not at risk of being freezing unless you go in the water, of course. Uh, The ground itself is not burning like the fetid lands would be. uh, But it's still almost a different climate being this close to the volcano. And you feel like as you get closer and closer, that heat will only continue to grow. So let's get traveling. Uh, Before you do that, though, is the entire crew going with you? Do you want to leave people to guard these boats? How do you want to split it up? What's the benefit of bringing the crew with us? Is it so that we can carry the goods to sell or? So if you make it to Oracoa just fine, you can actually hire people to come back and get the goods to bring them back. Mm-hmm. Um, the orcs have quite a few horses and wagons as Aldrin is an accomplished horse rider. Um, so you'd be able to, you know, for, uh, low wage prices, hire people to come get them, or you can try carrying them now. Uh, you likely wouldn't be able to get all of them because you'd be carrying them by hand. You don't have wagons or anything, but you could get a good chunk of them for sure. But then you would also be leaving your ships unattended. Uh, whether that's a risk or not is is up to you. It seems like a risk to leave everything in the ships unattended. The other thing, so it would not be a bad idea to leave some folks behind to keep an eye on those river ships. Mm -hmm. That is a fleet. We have not discussed this yet, but I am concerned over where that fleet might be heading. What? There's a fleet of reavers? When did this happen? Yes, you are busy dying from some... (laughs) <laughs> problem with your saffron no yes, i a... definitely you <laughs> oh i'm sorry i was was i not the doctor it was it was did i i yeah, it would yeah okay yeah anyhow 
there's a very large fleet led by uh, you know who. Oh, yeah. Then do we want to bring all the Reavers with us just in case and leave the humans here? Because we don't want them to see the fleet or right. else they I don't, might want to join them. I don't think the fleet, the fleet in its entirety can make its way up this fjord. They would not be able to maneuver. At most, they could send a few boats this close. And I don't see what purpose they would serve coming this close to Orokoa by ship. But There's nothing here to raid. If the Reavers, our Reavers, saw them, and they could take our boat and join them. But they Hello. didn't see them. I don't and know I would, if one eye would... Which is why we want to bring it with us. The other thing you all would know is that having a group of Reavers show up at the Orc City may not be bad idea. well thought of as well. I would leave. I would leave, one eye, um, and the and and the reavers and most of the sailors, and Woford. And I'm I'm not ships. trying to say that like you'll immediately be attacked or anything like that. You would just have to figure out a way to explain all these wolfkin that look like reavers. I'd leave them. All right. I don't think Woford will stay with the reavers. I could always piss on him again. They would know I'd, to leave him alone. I, Wilford will come with us. Wilford can carry things that we bring with us. Uh, I already have a full pack, uh, but I would like to go with you because it's been a long time since we've been in a tavern, uh, and I could use a drink. W Wilford, Which is why you're going to more carry more than, than just yours. that pack. No, no, no. Uh, I, I think it's just a perspective thing. You know, because you're smaller, your pack looks bigger, and because I'm bigger, my pack looks smaller. But but I can see that there's like. No, no, it's the same. I checked. I checked this morning, and he starts walking away. Bacho reaches out and grabs Wolford by his back and his pack. He yanks him back. He's like Wolford. If you're coming, you're carrying part of the goods, or you're staying. Of course, of course. I I already packed some, uh, but I'm coming. I'll, I'll carry more. That's fine. Yes, yes, you will. All right. Uh, so let's simplify this. The Reavers are staying. Uh, One Eye is staying to watch them. Do you want your uh, crew from Terran to stay as well to kind of balance things out? Otherwise, One Eye will be by himself. Uh, yes. It, you can bring some of them with you. You can leave them all. Uh, but I imagine the leave core half, group of the four of you are going. Half. Yeah, at least take some representation from the crew so they can see that we're okay. dealing with them fair, dealing with the sell of the goods fairly. But we'd want okay, to probably so leave Elba Eva there. will go with you, then. Or, uh, no, I'd leave, uh, she's the the... I'd leave Eva with the ship. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so you can bring a, another crew member with you to uh, be a witness, basically. Somebody else and that then... she, has, she points mm. out to us. E Eva, Eva, who do you like in this crew, like, a lot? Uh, Aldrin, you're going with. Okay. Aldrin is our new best friend. Wait a second. This whole time we've had an Aldrin and a Zaldrin. It's been so confusing. Oh we didn't want to God. tell you because it was kind of awkward. And like Zaldrin is like a really good fighter. So we didn't want to. But yeah. Is Aldrin a really good fighter? He even spells it the same way, just without the Z. Is it like a silent Z? No, no, there's no Z. Okay. Okay. I did, sure. Okay. Does he have a last name? Maybe we could like call him by yeah, his. Yes, N. Okay. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. And Zaldrin just sort of like looks at the sailor and looks at herself and just says, "Clearly, there can be no confusion." I, I, they're I they're like soulmates in, oh. in names. Well, I heard the little rumor that Zaldrin and Wolfert are pretty tight. Oh yeah, yeah. we're very close. Ooh. Yeah. So these are the know. things that. Wolford says. You believe everything that Wolford says, right? All of you believe all of the things that Wolford says. Wolford, you're not carrying enough. Go get another get another crate. <laughs> Your things, Aldrin. Anything you say. Ooh. Anything you say, Aldrin. Mm. Oh, man. You should have said, as you wish. <laughs> as you wish. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so so uh, the pack. Pack up uh, as many of the goods as you can get. Uh, and we'll simplify this. We can handle this outside of this session, okay. uh, whatever you're able to carry. Uh, but let's get one final travel roll as you need to travel two hexes to get into the city. 
uh, and you no longer get to lead the way from your crown because you mm-hmm. are going by land. Yeah, I mean, I'll hand but, that over to Bacho at this point. Yeah, yeah, because Bacho's got Pathfinder, so mm-hmm. he'll uh, he'll do that. So uh, is not needed, correct? Uh, someone can still keep watch. Uh, so whoever wants to do the scouting. Uh, I got two sixes. This is your native land, Zodron. Who better to point out the dangers that we might I face along the way? really hurt my brain yesterday trying to think of nursery rhymes. I'm about to break myself with wits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know some nursery rhymes? Maybe, and I'll pull out the flute. Maybe I can play along if you can remember the tune. All of you, think- looking at this flute, do feel a pull to it. You didn't feel this while you were in the canticles in that dungeon. Oh, God. Now that you're out and it's available, it it has an allure to it. It's a very interesting instrument there, Mirren. I did not realize you had taken it with you. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it seemed like it'd be good because we needed to play the song maybe again. You know, do, 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 do. It's very interesting. You know, I am I am quite a flute player myself. Uh, I've never seen you touch an instrument. That's very interesting. I have many Gun. responsibilities, yeah. as we've seen. Well, I feel like you choose to do a lot of that stuff. Anyway, uh, Zaldrin, what's what's the tune of your nursery rhyme? Yes, it's the. It, there's just the one part that just stays in my head. It's, oh. S is for smolder. S is for smolder. Uh, I'm not sure I can I can work with that. Uh, you, you play the flute. I don't. That's your job. That, that it's a good point. I'll 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 come up with the rest of the tune, and when I've got it, I'll I'll compose something, and shoves it back in the backpack. Maybe once we get there. Um, yeah. Just listen, and you'll probably hear someone. And, and then the rest of it will come in my head, because I just can't seem to remember the rest of it. So, Yeah, that, that sounds fair. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to think on it and listen to people when we're back in, in your hometown. Okay, that, that, sounds, that sounds good. You pass through these Ashlands, and it's not necessarily difficult travel, uh, it's a bit wearying, almost as if you're walking through snow because the ash is not compact. Uh, you, you leave deep footprints with every step you take. It's difficult to breathe. Uh, you get to the point where you start covering your faces uh, so you're not breathing in as much of this dust. Uh, and even then, you've gotten to the point where you're just coughing uh, and a lot of the the spittle that comes out is just black. But the terrain itself is mostly flat. Uh, Whatever geographic features were here have been leveled out by years and years of ash. And you find yourself getting closer and closer to this volcano. Uh, Zaldrin, you recognize it. The rest of you, you'd be able to see in the distance a large black square, almost perfectly shaped. Zaldrin, you know that this is the city of Orakoa. And as you get closer, uh, you can see more details that there is a square wall perimeter here that appears to be made out of entirely volcanic glass, this obsidian. And it's not brickwork. It's not as if uh, it was crafted, as if it just formed itself. There's no lines in it. There's no mortar or anything like that. You get closer and closer and you see that there is a bit of a glow on the outside of this glass that shines. Zaldrin would tell you that there is a moat of lava that circles around this glass. And there are stories that the ancient crafters, the magma singers, uh, forged these walls with the lava and then they excavated the area around it. Uh, leaving these massive walls of obsidian that have never been uh, conquered or defeated by any army or opposing force. 
So you get closer and closer. You see that there are actually horsemen riding out. Uh, there is a gate made of metal fashioned uh, in much the same way that you would see in other places. And the bridge across this lava is one large stone slab, uh, 30, 40 feet long, a foot and a half thick, easily able to handle the weight of all these horses coming across. And they begin charging towards you all. As they get closer and closer, Zaldrin, you can see that these are orc warriors and they are something to be concerned about. It's very strange that they would be heading towards you, as visitors do come occasionally, and they're mostly welcomed. There must be something happening. As they get closer, Zaldrin, you recognize one of them. It is Charga, your old trainer. Mentor, maybe? Teacher, at least. The person who taught you how to wield a spear. These uh, dozen horsemen uh, get closer, and Charga calls out, you're not welcome. Turn around. Zaldrin? Charga? What are you doing here? I thought we were rid of you long ago. Uh, you look like you've yes. gotten weak. Age That's does do such things. I would dare to say you're not as strong as once you trained me. You look at him. He's a large orc. Uh, he's riding a horse much the same uh, build as Ven. Uh, darker uh, color coat, uh, but just as muscular as Ven. And he's a man that suits his horse. Uh, he has muscles upon muscles. Uh, very large, extremely broad-shouldered. His face does look like it's aging. There are some deep creases. Many of them look like they're scars uh, that have uh, long ago been buried by age and he gives you a huff when you say that it, he looks as if he's gotten weaker too I've only grown stronger with age what are you doing here uh, we come to trade since when is such an interrogation at these gates we have reports that Reavers are nearby, and there is turmoil in the city. We do not wish for more. We have there not been allowing Reavers, traders. But we have them under control. There are other Reavers further out, though. How many did we you see? We passed them to get here. Give me details, woman. Will you let us in? We're here to trade. It includes information. Um, yeah, manipulation is not uh, something she's particularly good at. Is Don't have any helping? justification for taking audience dice either. Could, you could can take audience helped? dice. What would be your argument to help? information is just as valuable to trade and if you're not letting us in why would we give you such values valuable items i'll give you plus one for that <laughs> oh my rolls oh, are Melissa, just your dice today so but where so are wonderful. your real dice <laughs> <laughs> there we go one empathy damage one success Very well. The Sahal will wish to hear your information. It better be worth it. And the horse riders turn back without even escorting you. Just start uh, char charging back towards the gates. We'll go ahead and end there for the night. As you have now gained access to the city of Orokoa. Uh, travel went a little bit longer than I thought it would, but that's okay. We'll get into uh, the politics of it next week. Let's do some shout outs. Uh, Aaron, what do we got going on with Garblag? Uh, next week on Garblag at on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we should be back with some Coriolis, Millie GMing. And then on Thursday, uh, I believe Lewis will be starting uh, the One Ring second edition campaign, The Ballad of Bardings. 
That's it. We're a little week. partial to One Ring on this channel, I think. I, I, I seem to note something about that from time to time. Yeah, Jeff, argue. what do we got going on here with all we got? I would argue it's the world's foremost One Ring stream and podcast. I, I would I would argue that. <laughs> I would back it up. I, I would, I would agree it. with that by all means. Uh, what do we Thanks have my going Saturday. On? Yeah, it's it's scary to think it's closing or ending soon. Uh, but let's, let's not talk about Saturday yet. Let's talk about Thursday. Cause that's our next stream. Uh, you can catch Aaron, Melissa, Kipser, myself. Steven is not there physically, but he is there in spirit in the form of Pennsylvania poke. Very, uh, very <laughs> friendly guy shows up, helps whenever he needs to. Uh, and Melissa doesn't like him. So it, uh, it all pretty much <laughs> tracks. Uh, then, uh, so yeah, we're going to be playing die role-playing games. So much fun. Uh, so come check that out. Uh, Friday, we are back to Delta green as we're going to be picking up our second scenario in our new campaign. Uh, so if you haven't actually watched the first, uh, scenario, it's perfect time to hop in. Uh, we are going to start a brand new scenario. This one's actually going to be a official, uh, Delta green one. I will not give away the name just yet. I don't want to spoil anything, uh, but you should, uh, you should come hang out with us on Friday. Uh, Saturday, we are, as we already mentioned, we are doing some one ring. Uh, we are we are closing in. We are literally on the border of Angmar, and uh, the last few episodes or so of that campaign is coming. Uh, Monday next week, we should be doing some Call of Cthulhu Horror on the Orient Express, and we'll be back on Tuesday for more uh, Forbidden Lands. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please uh, follow the channel. Uh, there's a follow button somewhere on your screen or something somewhere. You should click that. Uh, also, go ahead and check out our YouTube page. Uh, you can look up Adventures in Lollygagging. We've got all sorts of games over there, both current ones. Uh, we usually take whatever we did live stream, we turn it around, and we put it on YouTube within a day or two. And uh, we also have plenty of games that we played in the past. So if there's something that uh, something that catches your fancy, go ahead and give it a watch. Uh, we play a lot of different games, so hopefully there'll be something that you do like. Uh, not everyone can watch everything, but hopefully there's something we've done that you uh, you might enjoy. So that's about it, man. Do you have any any last final words of wisdom for us, Stephen? I'm not a wise person, but uh, we are building up towards the climax. So make sure you tune in next week in the next couple weeks as we are going to see what happens to the pack. Uh, we'll discover their final fate. Fantastic. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and raid our friends over at Lost Care of NRPG. They are currently running the game. They raid us sometimes. We raid them sometimes. So follow the raid. Have a great rest of your night, and we'll see you later this week. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Good night.